This wall really towers over me. We're right against the contact zone of where the sediment and volcanic material met. Now this beautiful red sedimentary rock is chert and it's got black uh, iron and manganese which is a limonite uh, coating on it. Uh, here's big chunks of it as well. This is all chert in here and really it's beautiful chert. Uh, it's got some lovely coloring but this was the sediment that was here before the volcano blew through it. It just has some beautiful stripes in it and then in the cracks the iron and manganese have leached down into the limonite gothite and made limonite gothite uh, coating on it. I love this stuff. It's beautiful. And we got lots of it. But what we're trying to do here is expose the wall of the volcano. And it's kind of funnel shaped. And this is the side I didn't want him to dig. And he dug this uh, sedimentary part out. So now I can clean it off and clean off the side of the volcano. So I'll get in here and work on this and I'll use tools, but it's fun. I, uh, I didn't get in here right away and I let it dry and it cracks away from here and it makes it easier to just uncover the volcanic wall when that clay and chert kind of dry and crack. It rolls out of there easier, but uh, it's kind of a funnel shape here and the wall doesn't go straight it kind of bulges out uh, this is still sediment here you can tell by the color the sediment and uh, we had a big piece of hard material stick out here and i thought it was volcanic but a big chunk has fallen off and it's not volcanic it's hard it's kind of a sandstone and I believe what happened is this used to be beach sand before the volcano intruded into a shallow sea and then when that hot magma came back down uh, it cooked this wet sand and made this sandstone and then it dried and cracked and manganese and iron leached down in between the cracks and that's why it's black. That's just a coating of veneer on the outside. It doesn't go all the way through. So anyway, that, that is not lamprite. That is sandstone. And I was thinking this part that jutted out was lamprite, but this may be, <laughs> it's hard. Now this is sandstone. This is more of like what broke off there. And we'll pull this piece out maybe. One handed with a camera in the other hand. Ah. Ooh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's all sediment. And that may be all volcanic right next to it. Igneous material. We will get in here with some tools and probe and check it. Won't it be fun to go back this way and peel these layers off and just expose what's under there? This is going to be a fascinating study to me. I look forward to doing that. And we'll do it soon. It's just we got things to do right now before we got rain coming tomorrow. And I've got some other things that need to be done out here. But uh, look at that fascinating wall and the, the layers of sediment. These layers used to be flat lying sediment think of it as like mud <laughs> it and water and mud seeks out its own level well if these layers are stood up on end something happened either earthquake or volcanic or a combination of the two caused this once flat lying sedimentary mud rock to be tipped up on an angle now so this will really be a fascinating study and I hope to get some geologists in here. We may be looking at volcanic right there and then this is some sandstone 
and then this is the chert sediment. This color rock is also chert, I believe. No, or it's a sandstone. No, that's more like a sandstone. Anyway, we'll have a geologist figure it out. I'm just a prospector. Prospector is one who digs holes and doesn't know what he's doing. And a geologist is the one who comes a look at the open hole and tell you what's in it. So I need to get to some smart people in here. And we'll have them coming. I've invited some geologists to come and play in this with me and we'll figure out what's here and piece together a theory of what happened here long ago. But that is just towering over me. I'm six foot tall and that is more than, well, four or five feet above my head. So this is an amazing wall. Hundreds of tons of material that this summer I want to pull out and process through our diamond recovery plant. This entire wall here, but first I want to pull a sediment back because there are no diamonds in the sedimentary. It's all in the igneous and I want to only process the stuff that has diamonds in it and get an idea for, you know, the grade. So if you had a bunch of clay or chert mixed in with your tonnage, then it skews the results. You don't know how many diamonds per hundred, how many carats of diamonds per hundred ton you have if you have a bunch of sediment mixed in. So my job will be to get this cleaned back. And uh, we're just in a fantastic man-made cavern. We dug this out last uh, summer when it was dry. It's dry again right now, but we've got rain coming. But uh, this is kind of fascinating this material that fell at first when I was off at a distance, I thought it was volcanic material that fell and I'd have to get buckets and put it, it, put it in the buckets, but that's just a sandstone. And this may be too, so we'll see how far it is back in there to the igneous. So uh, fascinating stuff ahead. And this will look different even after it rains, uh, the rain that's coming the next couple of days. This is igneous, this is volcanic, and uh, you can see the way it's fractured vertically like that. And see over here, all this is igneous material. Uh, diamond bearing rock, see how it's fractured vertically on this side of the ditch as well. And uh, this is just solid volcanic rock all in through here. So this will be great stuff to look at. So the wall we were looking at is is right here we were looking at the other side of it and uh, we'll take all these hundreds of tons out and run it through our diamond recovery plant and find out how many carats per hundred ton is in this material fun times ahead <laughs>